Hey everyone, I'm Nick and welcome to the channel. If you don't already know, I really like having Android Auto and Apple CarPlay in my vehicles, and I've used universal touchscreens and aftermarket head units to add those features to my cars. But what if you have a newer car that already has wired Apple CarPlay and you want an upgrade? Maybe you want to dish the cables and go wireless like in the latest cars, or you've switched to an Android phone and your car isn't compatible with Android Auto. Well, today we're checking out something that adds wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay to any car compatible with wired Apple CarPlay, and it even adds a standalone Android system. This is the Minix CA480. It's the Android AI media hub that Minix sent me to try out. Now you may recognize Minix from my recent review of their CP89HD universal touchscreen, so I'm excited to try this out. Now this is basically three systems in one because you get wireless Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay, and a standalone Android system. So let's see what's included in the box. Okay, so this is the unit itself. We've got a SIM card slot if you want to get data on board and have your car be connected. We've got a USB-C port and a micro SD card slot. We also get USB-C to USB-C cable. USB-A to USB-C cable. Now these two USB cables are feel really nice. They're both sleeved, so they got the fabric exterior, and uh, the connector ends are metal, which is feels really good. And USB cable that allows you to plug this end into the car and this end to a 12 volt adapter. So if your car's radio can't provide quite enough power directly using one of these, you can use this to bump up the power available now, if you're wondering, why would you need this? Well, that's because the specs on this unit are actually pretty impressive. Uh, it's almost like a smartphone built into this box. It has an eight core Snapdragon processor, eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, Wi-Fi with 2.4 and five gigahertz bands, Bluetooth, GPS, as well as uh, GLONASS, Beidou, QZSS, and Galileo compatibility. So you can use it all over the world. And like I mentioned, the SIM card slot micro SD card slot and USB-C port. So we also get a user manual, get your little brief instructions. Like if your car comes with a USB-A port, you plug it in either using this or the power pass through. A little manual covering a little bit on the user interface. Now with the unboxing done, let's go see what this is all about and test it out in a couple cars. Now this is a 2005 Yukon XL with an aftermarket Pioneer head unit. It was installed about maybe six years ago. And this unit has support for wired Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto. But you know, the base interface is pretty standard, pretty dated. You can play things with CD, with the aux input, over Bluetooth, you know, nothing too crazy. But we can give it a nice little upgrade with the CA480. So right here, I have the USB-C to USB-A cable, which we'll plug in right here. I've got the uh, power pass-through cable. So this will connect to the data port. This will connect to the power port. I have a 12 volt to USB adapter. You'll have to bring your own. Pop that in here. Now this is gonna connect to 12 volt. And this side will connect to the input for the head unit. And in my truck, it's down here. So that's where we put it plug that in. And then the last thing is to plug this in to power pass through. We'll see it turn on. Green is it's booting. And then look right here as soon as it this switches to blue. We'll briefly see a CarPlay screen here. iPhone, iPod, AI box, Apple CarPlay. And it boots into Android. So I'm going to just pop this right here. My first thing is a little safety warning. You know, don't use it while in motion. You know, be safe kind of stuff. And then we have our Android operating system here. This essentially turns your head unit into an Android tablet that's kind of tailored for car use. So you've got your shortcuts here, got our back shortcut, our menu shortcut. You can see all the apps that are installed. We'll go through that in a moment. And uh, we can go into settings. This is actually running Android 12. You connect to Wi-Fi in here if you want to install your own apps or connect or maybe you want to use your phone as a hotspot. And you can go through here. Let's see. Oh, dark theme. That looks nice. Go back. 
We've got, uh, so this is our settings, and here we have about the head unit resolution. This depends on what it's plugged into. This specific unit is 840 by 480, but if your, your head unit or car's screen is higher resolution, it will adjust. So actually the first time you plug this in, it will load up and then it'll reboot to adjust to the resolution of your car. Um, the system, you know, it's very standard Android setup. You can check for system updates, but this one's actually already up to date. I checked it earlier. Yeah, you can change your wallpaper. Uh, let's see. Right now it's mountains, but let's put it in as this right here. Now I go to the home screen. That's the new wallpaper. I'll see the apps. We got web browser with Chrome, Google Maps, gallery application settings, which we just went through, the Google Play Store, a shortcut to the system update. So when you're connected to the Wi-Fi, you can update the OS, a uh, Bluetooth shortcut, APK installer if you want to sideload apps, YouTube Music, YouTube, Spotify, Google Assistant, Google App, Multiplay, which is important, Exit, which will jump, drop you back out into your car. But here I can just get right back in. A weather app, Prime Video, APK Pure, GPS test app, File Explorer app, Disney Plus, uh, Media Player, and Netflix. Now, if you want to switch between apps that are already open, you can press and hold the back button and go to one of the apps that's already open. One thing that's neat while we're still in the Android OS is that you can do split screen apps. Okay, so let's say you want to run an app in split screen. Right here, it's a File Explorer. You have it open, but let's click and hold the home button and then it moves it over to the side. And we can open another app that's compatible, the Folders app, for example. And now we have two apps running side by side. You can actually shift it if you want one side to be bigger than the other. And then to get out, you press and hold the Home button, and you can just swipe that all the way over. So that could be convenient if you want to have like navigation and you know your music. Now, what you've probably been waiting for is to see how does this add wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Well, that is the Multiplay app, which is right here or right here on the main screen. And let's start with Android. So I'm going to connect my phone via Bluetooth. My system is called AI Box CFD4, but it'll be it'll tell you the name of your unit right here. So you find that in Bluetooth. Pair it with your phone. Here it's asking to pair. All right, and then it automatically connects. Saw a QR code, but I know. And uh, yeah, so this is normal Android Auto. We've got a shortcut to our apps. You know everything you can think of here, or all your compatible apps will show up in here. So with that set up, I could turn on my car, let it boot into here, tap multiplay with my phone in my pocket and it'll automatically connect. Yeah, this is connected to the head unit via CarPlay, but Android Auto is working through the Minix right here. Now let me disconnect my phone and we'll try again with Apple CarPlay. I got my iPhone here, tap multiplay. I'm gonna connect my phone to, to the unit, to the Minix. And now I just have to enable CarPlay on it and it should switch over automatically. There we go. This is to drop back out to the head unit. But yeah, we have everything here. So now we can go to Pocket Casts, maybe see, just play something here. You're listening to Song Explorer, where musicians take apart their songs and piece by piece tell the story of how they were made. Yeah, so you have all your uh, Apple CarPlay here. And then again, that's completely wireless. So this is a nice upgrade for this head unit because otherwise it's always wired and you know, you gotta take your phone out of your pocket every time. And if you're running errands, it saves a little time to have it wireless. Now let's say maybe you only like to use your car's radio for music. And you know, you don't, you don't use the subscription models. You could just put in all your favorite music on the micro SD card and play it from here in 
your favorite music player app. So just get in the Play Store, log in, get your favorite music player app, load all your favorite music on the micro SD card, and you're good to go. Another option is you don't want to connect your phone to your car, but you want it to be a standalone unit. You could get a SIM card with a data plan and then run this as a standalone infotainment Android hub. And then that gets you Google Maps, all your favorite apps, all your streaming apps, and even video if you're comfortable doing that. This gives you a lot of options. So it's a nice upgrade for a vehicle like this or a car that has a wired Apple CarPlay built in from the factory and you know, adding Android Auto to a car that might not have it before is really nice. Having it wireless, even if you already had it, is a nice upgrade, a nice convenience, and it gives you the whole third option of the whole OS. So definitely something to check out if you're interested. One thing that's important to note with this is some cars will allow you to just plug this in directly. So just directly the Minix. Now, something that's important to note is that some cars will be able to provide enough power for the unit to run just plugged in with this. But one way to know that you don't have enough power is you can test it, plug it in. And you watch the light right here. It is possible that this head unit will run it just off its own power. Yeah, actually. Yeah, so this head unit can power this on its own. But if you have a head unit that doesn't quite have enough power, it'll just blink green on and off and it won't connect to your head unit. Now, as you can see, this right here is way less cables and super discreet in this case. So yeah, it's worth trying out. Yes, there are definitely cars that won't be able to power this unit with a direct connection. Luckily, this one can. So if I decide to leave this in here, it'll just be this short cable plugged into the unit. But there are cases where you'll need to use a 12 volt adapter and the power adapter. All right, so this is a 2017 Audi A3. Now it's compatible with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and wired. And down here, I've already put the CA480 in there. I'll plug it in. And it's turning on. And now it's gonna connect. And there we go. We have Android running. Now, if you're wondering why you haven't seen this car on my channel, it's because it's not my car. I'm borrowing it to show you that the CA480 works with the factory head unit that's compatible with wired Apple CarPlay. Now, one thing is this display is not a touchscreen, but the way Audi has you use it is you turn the dial and it moves the cursor across the screen. And actually you can also shift the dial left and right. So I can navigate to whatever I need, which is multiplay. Boom. Now it should connect to my iPhone automatically. Yep, there we go. So you can see it highlights the app that's selected. It'll actually scroll through. Or I can, you know, shift it up and down like that. And it works great. Let's go to Pocket Gas. Now playing. We got that there. Could go back. Back to all the apps. And that works really well. I actually drop back out into the main operating system here. That'll let me navigate through here and I can go through to all the... Oh, whoa, check this out. So this is a touchpad too? and is reading it as a mouse input. So, I think, do I have to tap? Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. And you can also just swipe over when you're in the menu. But on that main screen, 
Okay, so it, it did show up the mouse for a little bit, but it seems like that's not the, the main thing. But you can also swipe your finger on it and navigate to whatever you want. That's cool. Okay, so on this display, you have to use the arrow, yeah. All right, let's go back to multiplayer. One thing to note is that in some cars, you will need to connect the CA480 to the car's Bluetooth system for audio, which is why it has dual Bluetooth. One Bluetooth for the wireless CarPlay and Android Auto, and another for the car's system. Certain head units will have the audio pass through the USB connection, like on the head unit I tested earlier, but others use Bluetooth, so you'll need to connect the CA480 to your car's Bluetooth. Overall, the CA480 is a neat little unit. It's great for cars that are a few years old that might only have wired CarPlay. Now you get wireless Android Auto and wireless CarPlay. I also think it's neat because it has an Android OS so you can install all your favorite apps. If you're interested in camping or off-roading, you could install an offline GPS app like Osman and load some music on it so you can go where there's no cell phone signal. I think this is also a really good option for anyone who has an early aftermarket radio with CarPlay because you can upgrade your functionality without upgrading your radio. The convenience of wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay is huge, but if you prefer the idea of a connected car and all the infotainment options that gives you, just pop a SIM card into this and you're ready to go whether you have an aftermarket or factory radio. The CA480 really gives you the most options of anything I've seen so far. I wanna thank Minix again for sending this to me and if you're interested in getting one for yourself, I'll leave a link in the video description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and if you enjoy seeing this type of video, don't forget to leave a like. If you wanna see more reviews like this or you wanna watch me rebuild cheap European cars, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.